Welcome back to Z-Speed. Thanks for tuning in. Today, I've got a nice fresh bag of white line end links. We'll be replacing the stock end links because they are just too long now that we've lowered the 350Z with BC coilovers and they've caused my lower control arms to fail. So I can't wait to get these adjustable end links in there because it's just put way too much tension on those lower control arms. And these are some super high quality end links. From what I've heard, these are some of the best. And they've also got a nice sealed joint right here, which allows no dust or dirt or debris to get in. And so that's very nice. There's a few out there that don't have this. So we'll be using the white line today. And I've heard nothing but good things about those. So to replace the failed bushing on the lower control arms, I've got some Amusia Racing lower control arms, which is a super high upgrade. Um, the bushings on these Amusia lower control arms are much better than the, the stock bushings. They are just really beefy here. As you can see, if you've ever looked at your low control arms, these bushings are much more massive than the original and they will not slip. As you can see how they're constructed, they won't, they won't fail the way the um, stock control arms do. So now it's time to get your car up on jack stands, remove the front rims, and we can begin the unbolting process. The good news is, there's just five nut and bolts to remove to release the lower control arm. I think the best order to go in here would be to remove the lower ball joint nut, the BC coilover nut, and then you can focus on your in-link nuts, upper and lower. And last but not least, we'll hit the control arm to the subframe. So now I'll show you the problem here with this end link. You can see it's flexing quite a bit here. Uh, it's pushing up on the sway bar and it's just causing a lot of tension against that lower control arm. And you can see right here, the bushing failed and the lower control arm slipped and made contact with the front of the subframe here. So it's definitely not in the correct position here and it's causing the steering to be a little tight. So this new lower control arm should solve all these problems here. So before you can remove the lower ball joint nut, you really need to get rid of this cotter pin. And I like to just take those and straighten them out as best as I can and try to pull them out. Now, if that doesn't work, you can always just grab some wire snips and clip them and then pull them out that way, whichever's easiest and then you can go ahead and remove the nut on top of the lower ball joint. And you can see I've also removed the nut on the BC coilover here. So now I'm ready to go ahead and pull this bolt out of the BC coilover. Now when you're doing this, just back it out nice and easy. Try not to strip the threads or damage the threads in any way. It just takes a little time and it'll back its way out. Once you get that bolt out, um, you can go ahead and place the nut back on there and that'll just keep you from losing track of which nut goes on which bolt and I like to do that. So now we can go ahead and break the nut on the end link which is connected to the lower control arm and this is going to be easier to break this part loose first and then you can slide the in link out of the lower control arm and as you can see once I push out the in link that the upper part of the in link is just real sloppy and loose you can see that it shouldn't have that much play so that thing was definitely shot and needs to be replaced now I've decided to go ahead and remove the lower control arm from the subframe because it'll give me a lot more room to get a wrench up in here and break the upper part of this end link loose. So now I'm gonna go ahead and break the nut loose on the bolt that holds the lower control arm to the subframe. And we've got the nut facing towards the rear of the car and the head of the bolt facing towards the front of the car. 
I believe it's a 19 millimeter socket, but don't quote me on that. And it's got quite a bit of torque on there and we'll go over torque specs later, but I ended up needing a extension on my breaker bar to get this thing loose. It was on there so tight. So hopefully you have an extension for your breaker bar. You've got a nice long breaker bar and eventually I was able to break it loose. And once I got it loose, the bolt started to spin. So you're gonna probably need two ratchets at this point to uh, get this bolt off. And so I stuck one on the other side and I was able to go ahead and remove the nut here. And once you get that nut off, I was very, very lucky and my control arm just popped right off. Sometimes you will need a rubber mallet to break it loose from the lower ball joint and make sure that cone that sits on top of the lower ball joint stays on the ball joint. Otherwise, I'll have to pull it out of the lower control arm. Mine luckily stayed on top of the ball joint here. And now I'm just kind of putting this bolt back in here so I don't lose track of it. This is something I like to do. Now let's do a quick comparison of the old control arm versus the new control arm. And you can see that this bushing is actually sliding completely out of this old lower control arm here. And it's totally failed. But I will say that this thing held up for 15 years. So, you know, not too bad for a suspension part. It did hang in there for quite a long time. Now this new construction you can see would, will hopefully avoid this slippage because of the way the bushing is actually mounted in the lower control arm and it's much beefier construction as well. So hopefully it'll last for several years. And I'm now going to attack the upper part of this in link and all you need is an Allen wrench and an opening wrench and you can squeeze it in there. It's a little tight, but I was able to break it loose and get that out of the way. So now at this point, we're ready to put the new lower control arm in. You can see I've added a little grease on top of that cone we talked about earlier. And we can go ahead and seat the new control arm in and bolt it in. Now the new lower control arms actually have a little label left and right. So you can see that's left, makes it really simple. And what we're going to do here now is we're going to slide the control arm up onto the ball joint first and then slide it into the subframe. So just attach it right up on top of the ball joint loosely and then you can slide it into the subframe and now I'm going to go ahead and thread my bolt in here. And at this point we're just going to kind of hand tighten all the bolts. So I'm going to thread that through and it fits like a glove. It's amazing. This is super high quality lower control arm. I'm very impressed with the Mosier and um, I would highly recommend it and I'll link them below. So now what we're doing is just pushing up on the knuckle here. We're lining up all of our bolts and I'm going to go ahead and thread the uh, BC coilover bolt through and just be careful not to damage it like we talked about earlier. And I'm going to kind of hand tighten it uh, with the nut as soon as I can get this threaded in. And then once we get that on, we can go ahead and it's gonna take quite a bit of force. You're gonna to have to push up on the knuckle here and thread the castle nut onto the lower ball joint. So take your time and you might even wanna use a floor jack to kind of push up on that if you're having trouble, but I was able to get it loosely tightened on there. So the torque specs are 93 foot-pounds here, 62 foot-pounds here, and 59 foot-pounds for the castle nut to the lower ball joint. So get your elbow grease out, grab your torque wrench, and just start torquing. And this one's got, like we talked about earlier, 93 foot-pounds, and I actually had to switch positions to from below to above to get this thing to fully torque down. Now we're gonna torque the castle nut to the lower control arm, and we talked about that at 59 foot-pounds. That was pretty smooth going there, no problems there. And they're gonna end up with the BC coilover to the lower control arm, and that's 62 foot-pounds and just try to keep your torque wrench stable. You can see mine wobbling a little bit there, but no problems, we got it torqued. 
Now that we've got both control arms, lower control arms mounted, I just had to sit back and marvel at the construction of these things that are just really high quality. Super impressed with the Mosier. And um, now we're gonna wait till daylight. We're gonna go ahead and place the end links on. But yeah, very happy with these lower control arms. So at this point, you need to place your car on ramps or on blocks so that we keep the sway bar in a neutral position with no preload, and we'll talk more about that later. These white line in links also come with all their own hardware, so we won't have to use any of the old hardware. You can see these end links come with a little protective boot that goes over the rubber fitting and that's nice, keeps everything safe until you use it. And I'm gonna just flex these a little bit. You can see they're nice and stiff. That's what you expect with a brand new end link here. And the middle part here, this gold piece is called the buckle. And you wanna keep as much of the thread into the buckle as possible. Uh, minimum, uh, I think it's 14 millimeters. We'll go over that in a little more detail in a minute. But this is how they are adjusted right here. You can see that. I'm gonna mount them with the logo facing up. And I'm going to place this piece right up here onto the uh, sway bar and the lower piece onto the control arm here. And I just wanted to grab my old sway bar in links and just compare them real quick. You know, go through it and just show you how loose th these original ones have gotten. And just, we talked about it earlier, they're just real loose and they're moving around way too much. But the interesting part is that even though they're quite worn out, the rubber boot surrounding the ends are in really good condition, amazingly. So that part was still good, but, but overall they're shot and need to be replaced. So if you're not quite sure how to adjust your end links or how tall they should be or how short they should be, do this. Go grab your sway bar, push it all the way up, and then bring it all the way down and then come about neutral or midway. And this is where my sway bar ended up right here. That's about neutral, I would say. And then you can take your sway bar end link and just adjust it to fit into the lower control arm and the sway bar. And that'll give you a rough estimate of where it should be. Once you get that rough estimate, you can lock the bolts down and then we can measure the other sway bar in link and make sure that it's exactly the same size or exactly the same height as this one. Okay, when we go to mount the sway bar in links, we're gonna use a washer on both sides of the sway bar and both sides of the lower control arm. I'm just gonna kind of show you real quick what it looks like. I just wanna make sure that, because, because the original ones don't use a washer on both sides. So one here on this side, and then you put your in link onto the sway bar, and then you put this on the other side, and then you can throw your nut on right here. So it's just, that goes for all of these studs, okay? Okay, I'm gonna quickly go over the 14 millimeter rule, and I'm gonna unscrew this stud from the buckle, and I'm just gonna show you the thread here. They want 14 millimeters worth of thread into the buckle at all times, because if you don't have at least that much thread into the buckle, you will decrease the integrity of the, of the whole end length. And so you want this end link as, as sturdy as possible, and the more that it's threaded into the buckle, the more sturdy, more or less, this thing is, and or the integrity is higher. So the good news is that this thing is right out of the box, pretty much threaded in all the way and it's almost exactly what I needed. So you're not gonna probably have to worry about that if you've lowered your car, but if your car's standard height, then you may need to measure this. Now that you've adjusted one of your end links to provide no preload on your sway bar, you can take these nice digital calipers, if you have these, or just a regular millimeter ruler, and we want to match up the 
length of the one that we've measured out on the car with the other in length so that they're exactly the same. Now these digital calipers just make it super easy to get them right in line with each other. And you can see I've come out with 52.04 millimeters for my uh, in lengths here. Your results may vary depending on how high or low your car is, but this just makes it very easy to get these exactly lined up here. And once you get them lined up, you can lock these little nuts down on either side of the buckle, hand tight, and we're ready to install them into the car. Okay, now at this point, we are ready to put the end links in and I put a washer on the rod in on both sides already and I'm going ahead and put it into the lower control arm first and then I slid it into the sway bar up on top and you can see that little washer right there. So I'm gonna snug those down and then throw a washer on the other side and then hand tighten the nuts as best as I can before we torque them down. I'm also gonna to talk to you a little bit now about why we have no preload or why we want no preload on the sway bar. And it's basically to provide proper corner balancing all the way around your car. Now, ideally you'll want to install in links all the way around and you'll want to have your car up on blocks or ramps level. I've only got the front, so that's not gonna be possible right now. But what that does is it really helps with um, balancing your car for cornering or track work or you know just even on the street you want it well balanced you don't want one side a little lower or unbalanced versus another side it may throw you off a little bit when you're doing some crazy maneuvers but um, once you get these nuts hand tightened we are now ready to torque down the um, bolts and you're gonna need an Allen wrench right there. You can see it slides right inside the end link in the center. And then you're gonna grab an opening wrench and you'll, you'll be able to torque those nuts down. Now, ideally you'll need a really long Allen wrench so you can hold it a little easier. And I've got a really small one here. So it's really hard to get a lot of good torque on there but I did my best and I was finally able to get them torqued down pretty well. But um, yeah, ideally, grab a long Allen wrench if you have one. It'll make it a little bit easier to torque these down. And once you get these nuts torqued down, then we're ready to go ahead and tighten the um, nuts around the buckle here. And you remember the buckle's that golden part and the little, we have little nut, adjustable nuts on either end here. So what you're gonna do is get a wrench on the buckle and our opening wrench on the buckle and then you can use another opening wrench to tighten down these little nuts on either side. So once you get those all tightened down, we are pretty much done with the end links. And what you wanna do is recheck these after you drive about, it says 100 kilometers. After you drive 100 kilometers, you want to go back and just kind of check everything over, make sure everything, nothing's come loose. And I did have that problem on the Honda that I worked on earlier. I don't know if you saw that video, but the in-links loosened up a little bit. So definitely follow their, their recommendations. Go back after 100 kilometers and double check all of the nuts on here and make sure everything's still cinched down. And now if you're from the deep south or somewhere else in the United States, you're not from Europe. Uh, one, 100 kilometers is basically 62 miles. So after about 62 miles, go ahead and check those nuts again. Now, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And I'm also hoping you've had a really great summer. It's been a little hot down in the south here, but we've really enjoyed it. We've got a lot of installations done this year. So please like and subscribe if this video helps you out and you know what to do. Just keep on repairing.